Corps computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions.
Hello, hello, hello out there in TV land. Welcome <laughs> to another Unfiltered Gamer live stream. It is 6.30 for us. It's, I don't know, whatever for you. Um, <laughs> uh, as you're watching all over the world, uh, thank you for being with us. And today we are playing Solomon Kane. If you're not familiar with the IP, this is based on a book and uh, actually they made a movie out of one of the books. The book series for a character who's the, from the Puritan times. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. from Puritan times, and is essentially like a, a demon hunter, demon fighter, the fighter of evil, trying to redeem himself. Uh, it's definitely a favorite of Mike's. There we go. A campaign, a campaign yeah. style <laughs> strategy game. Mm -hmm. um, just so you want to jump in there? <laughs> <laughs> and block yeah. the camera, Mike. Block I'll the camera. The, I'll be in the back here explaining the game for you guys, and I will also be doing the story, so you guys will uh, not see me, uh, but you will hear me. We'll hear your disembodied voice giving us the story of Solomon Kane. But Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, Danny, welcome guys, welcome Yay. Jason, all you guys. Going, but I don't know. Hey, Jesse's when watching. It, when it comes down to the narrative aspect, <laughs> not seeing the narrative person kind of gives that ambiance. That's yeah, right. then it's a story. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So the game we're playing tonight is called Solomon Kane. The scenario is the beasts or the beast of Bordeaux. And this is one of many storybooks in the game. The storybook will contain many scenes and chapters, and we'll go through them up until the point where you guys uh, say we're done or the time limit uh, ends. Uh, there are two different types of story in this game. You're going to have, first of all, the chapter stories, and then you're going to move on to the scenes from those chapters. The scenes are basically where you're actually interacting with the board and the miniatures, and the uh, not the, and the story is where we actually talk. I read the story out loud. We set up all the different um, virtues, which I already went ahead and done. And of course, you'll be able to have options as to what you want to do, and that's how we'll set the board. So um, we'll be making decisions as you read the story. Right? Yes, yes, precisely. Yeah, that's good. I'll do my utmost to try and give you guys the layout of the rules as we go throughout the game. Um, and of course, with setup comes. Because the game involves choices, I couldn't set up the entire game. Makes uh, sense. So we're mm -hmm. going to have to set it up as, as it starts. Hopefully there'll be enough room to fit everything, otherwise we'll have to kind of mush, mush things off mm -hmm. the table. Or make, make certain or things more or okay. less available. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alright, you guys ready for the uh, ominous uh, side story? Mm -hmm. Tip me with it. Solomon <laughs> Kane rides along well-worn tracks in the pleasant Bordeaux countryside. It is late summer, the air is warm and balmy, and in the fields laborers turn from the day's toil to seek a well-earned hot meal and their bed for the night. After a day in the saddle, the Puritan has similar designs on filling his belly and renting a berth at an inn. As he slows his mount to join the villagers filing back into town, his tall, gaunt figure, clad in austere black, draws guarded glances Though some nod or bid him good eve, a wooden sign by the roadside named the village Calet. The streets are busy, thronged with hawkers tearing down their stalls for the night, and village folk haggling for last-minute bargains on unsold produce. As he arrives at the center of the village, looking out for an inn, Solomon becomes aware of a great commotion. From a side alley, a tall, saturnine man, uh, his head and arms restrained by stalks, rushes from the front of his horse. The unfortunate wretch is hotly pursued by a furious mob, crying out, Beast! and Monster! And all the while they pelt him with stones and fruit. Whatever the fellow has done, and in truth Cain does not care for the aspect of him, mob justice is no justice. So we're going to set the starting virtues, which are on the board as you see in the front there. I'll go ahead and switch the frame here so you guys can see the live stream, so everybody can see the top-down perspective. There you guys go. This is the four around us. Down there below, you'll see the virtue stats. You're going to have strength, clarity, compassion, and danger. The game ends if strength, clarity, or compassion reach zero, okay. or if the danger goes above ten. Okay. Okay. The starting stats for all of them are eight, 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 and four, respectively. Yep. I've placed the extra die and mercy and luck tokens on that board there as well. Yep. Your objectives, you can choose one of the two options, and this will determine what game you play. Option one is you can fend off the pursuers, no matter what the poor fellow did, mob justice is no justice, or you can put him on the horse and ride through the village. 
So what are we thinking? Hmm. I don't know if I necessarily want to put him on the horse. I don't know if we want to fight a mob. I don't know if we want to fight a mob. <laughs> oh, either. come on. <laughs> Fighting a mob is always <laughs> good. He is. Kind of an interesting male-female divide here. Yeah. <laughs> well, think of it this way. You throw him on a horse, and you're not sure what he is. You're putting yourself in good. immediate danger to yourself and your horse. But stopping the mob from doing something stupid. Like immediate, that's like potential. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of questions we don't know about him. But stopping a mob, you can at least have people around you in case things go absolutely haywire. And then at that point, numbers we is good. We don't have anybody with us, though. Mm-mm. It's just us One and the horse. The only the character mob. all four of you are controlling this game is Solomon. Solomon. Yeah. Yeah. Other yeah. than when you bring your virtues out onto the field. Mm-hmm. But they interact uh, in different ways. They're not actually going to be focusing on Solomon. They'll be dealing with forces that are otherworldly. Right now, we're just kind of whispering to Solomon <laughs> what yeah. to do, right? <laughs> we are the whispers in his ear. Uh... <laughs> I'm so thinking I'm stop, mob. After, you know, the, the stop the crowd. The mob. Stop. Stop the, try to okay. stop the crowd then? I guess okay. let's try. <laughs> Alright, so that will be 2A, so I'll actually go ahead and move to the 2A section. Um, and you, you generally you guys would be setting this up. Mm-hmm. But so I, get a or... I will I will tell you what we need. We're going to need two female villagers. Okay. Actually, we'll need pretty much all that there, other than the beasts. So what we're going to do is I need uh, to take the tiles. We'll need... 11A and 12A, 20B and 21A. 11A, 12A, 20B and 21A. And we'll actually go ahead and place that for you guys to see right there. Okay. There's yeah, four yeah. boards, which should be enough to fit right there in that middle space. 20B, 21A. And Callie can go ahead and place that down as you see it. 12A. 11 and 12A. Yeah. <laughs> On the bottom. Go figure. I put them all so that you could get them them instantly. Yeah. Twenty one A. That's right. There. Mm-hmm. So you need here. Yeah, we can move this. Yep. And that's okay. We can actually take this and put this over here. This is just your cumulative yeah. resources. Okay. Gotcha. You're going to need a little bit of space on both sides of your board, ever so slightly. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I think it wasn't loading. Okay. All right. Uh, two female villagers. Okay. Uh, One on each, right? A male villager. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the traveler. He's got the arm missing. Okay. Traveler. Uh, wa- what? What? Okay, uh, Prudence is going to go here. That's you. Solomon Kane is going to go here. And he's got not his horse. horse. Oh, not on his horse? Uh-uh. So this guy. Yeah. And then down here I need two male villagers. Okay, there you go. And then a female villager for down here. And one right there. So we have the scene. Uh, shadow. Okay. Black we things. Need a shadow here, and a shadow right here, and then oh, another male villager here. Okay, we got that one, and then the Z is gonna go here, and then. I can't tell what this token is. That's all. See that? Um, no, that's a track token. I think I have it over here. Okay. <laughs> oh no, Michael forgot something. Oh, and this will tell us which way is north. This is what you need. So that way is north. Okay. Yep, that's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so these are spawning nodes. Whenever a card says to spawn a, a character on X, normally it will be a shade. You'll spawn it there. Z and Y. Okay. Yeah. The board functions just like any other normal tactics game. When you move, it's one, two, three, right? Uh, if it's connected like this with two tiles, this is simply all one space. If it's red, that means you can't enter there. Uh, only otherworldly beings can do so. Uh, and 
one of the virtues actually starts out of the game, which means that that person's uh, active aura is available, which is yours, Josh. Okay. So you get uh, plus re-roll, one re-roll one and or flip. flip. Or flip. So you're going to get two two choices of a re-roll flip, re-roll flip on your turn. Very nice. Okay. Um, otherwise, you got a bunch of, of peoples here, right? And it's going to be following the story. Now, it's also going to ask you for... 10 darkness cards, which I've also went ahead and taken. This is basically going to be your uh, determination of how long the round goes. And I'll go ahead and place this right here for Callie. Okay. The end of every round. After you guys have all taken a turn, you'll draw one of these and you'll perform all the actions in order um, from top to bottom. And that's for every card in this game. You'll always be going from top to bottom. Okay. Makes it easy. You're also going to be getting discovery cards. And uh, discovery cards are... These guys here, these big ones here. And these ones are going to need uh, 1101 and 1102. And I think I actually took 1101 and 1102. These. And we'll read them in order. Okay? And whenever I ask you for more discovery cards, Callie, you can just take those. Okay. okay. So, the first one is a barrage of stones. It's uh, the mob charges after the man in stalks, hurling a variety of missiles, including some larger stones that might seriously injure or even kill him. This is a permanent effect. It says whenever a villager is in the same area as the traveler, the traveler cannot move. And the traveler is you. Okay? Solomon Kane. And this mm-hmm. is Solomon. Mm-hmm. So whenever any of these villagers are on his space, he can move. After the end of each virtue turn, if there's at least one villager in the traveler's area, you'll lose one compassion, and you'll mm-hmm. place one damage onto the traveler. Okay? And I'll go ahead and get the damage tokens. And this remains in play through, throughout the entire game. We'll just leave it there. The other one is that this is against the crowd. The Puritan steals himself against the oncoming mob, weighing his chance as he reaches for his pistol as he takes a deep breath, knowing he must disperse the mob before they render an unfair justice against the man. This is an active ability that lasts the entire game as well. Solomon knows that both his words and his actions may sway the crowd. Virtues may target villagers with the following actions. You can either A, talk to them, or B, bite them. Um, in order to fight or talk you'll need to be adjacent to them the only other action that is actually on the same space is explore all right x is equal so it says if you have less than x you'll take a look at this discovery card if you have more uh, for either of these options um, it'll tell you what discovery card to look at x is equal to the number of villagers in the same area as the target of the action so if it's in this area here that would be one if there was more than one villager there it it would be two okay so this goes out here so you can talk or attack the villagers Okay? Um, basically, these darkness cards will move the villagers around at the end of every round. Okay. All right? Okay. Your objective in the game is have the traveler reach... Um, yeah, the arm missing. Like, where is the traveler? I mean, no, no, no. Sorry. This is the traveler. Oh, okay. This is Solomon. That's the traveler. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Solomon is the hero. Whenever the, if, the, if the traveler can reach this area here, uh, the game will end. Um... However, if he doesn't make it by the end of the darkness deck, then uh, some other bad outcome will uh, occur. Oh, no. Okay. So the traveler is a seeker, and he's looking for this location here, and he has four health. And the villagers are rabble, seeker, uh, and traveler. Okay. So that is pretty much the entire scenario set up. I will do my best now to explain how turns work. Okay. Uh, on your turn, they're going to be given one of these guys here. This is your uh, turn order. And this is actually going to be max first, and it's going to go clockwise. Okay? With courage, then prudence, temperance, and finally justice. On your turn, you're going to be taking a number, you're going to be doing a number of things. Now, it sounds pretty complex, but it's actually pretty simple. So you're going to start by uh, enacting any start of turn effects, and there are none. Then you will take three die. So everybody can go ahead and grab three of the three die so they can have, the, have it to their disposal. You'll probably be getting more or less as the game goes on. Thank you. And Max, you're going to roll those three die. After you've rolled them, you can choose to either flip one of them to the other side, or you can re-roll one. Okay. Now, your objective in the game, and you should probably... Oh, you're also going to be drawing four... Shuffle this deck. Uh, Sorry, shuffle your virtue card deck. Mm -hmm. Uh, Draw four. Put two, oh. one on each side here, and keep the other two in your hand. Oh. That. Face, oh, okay. face up, then? This one stays here. Okay. Yes. The, the cards that are face up next to your board here 
are going to be cards that you can utilize as actions. Okay. Already here on the board for the setup was two cards here. I, uh, no, 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 I did that wrong. Oh, okay. Shuffle the deck. Okay. okay. Draw four. Choose two and place them on the sides. Okay. And then I take it. It says hello, by the way, Josh. And then I take it the um, markings here on the cards, the dice I would either need to save or flip, essentially. So you, for, to get to, to enact this card, you're going to need uh, this symbol, uh, the circular symbol, and you'll need to move your strength minus one. Got it. Okay, that's what that one is. Uh, so you, you guys have your cards on the side. You have two cards in hand, and then you have your deck of cards left over. Whenever you do, whenever you get rid of a card, or place a card down, at the end of your turn, you're going to draw back up to two cards. Okay. Okay. So now at this point, you can go ahead and either flip or reroll one of these die. Now, what's interesting is. On your cards, there's going to be symbols. And for the audience, I'll flip to show that one. The symbols represent the different die facing. The cross is a wild, and there's two of them. You can only ever have one wild for each set of symbols on a card. So you can never have two crosses. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case here, you're already going to have one there. Okay. Uh, if there's a question mark, it's any die. Uh, and if there are two specific symbols, you can use one cross and the other symbol. So never two crosses. Okay? That makes sense? Yep. So, this one. that is a cross, any die, a heart, and a circle. You just can't use okay. two crosses. You can't use a cross for you the question. You can't use a cross you know, twice. Okay. You know, it's okay. a wild, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, for the question, you can. It's a wild. Uh, sorry, it, it, the cross is any symbol. The question mark is any anyone will work. It's like minus oh, okay. one die. Oh. Got it. Okay. okay. Um, so you'll be able to take these die and place them on your board on one of, on any of these spaces. Now, if you don't fill up the card, though, you can't take the action. Mm -hmm. All right. And That's at the end of your turn, if you only fill up a certain number, they'll get removed. So if you can't pull, perform a full action or you don't want to, you have a couple other options you can do. For instance, you can donate die faces to other players, maximum of two. You can also um, reserve die faces as well. At the end of your turn, all die in front of you will disappear. If they're on okay. cards or in your donated area. However, in your reserve that you save, they can last for your next round. Okay, so you can go up to five tie at the beginning of your turn. Because so, when you donate these, somebody else will gain them, and then they can roll them and get them in reserve. Like, yes, you can actually get them to seven die in your turn. So at that um, point, can I save like these two dice on that card? No. Mm -hmm. your turn no at the end be... of your turn, all dice disappear if they are not reserved. Okay. So if you take them, you can reserve them. And then this one here, obviously there's nothing you could do, so you'd have to donate this to somebody else. So you have three options. You can donate, reserve, or place them on actions. Okay? Got it. Um, you can allocate your dot your pool into any of the following. Your dashboard, one of your active virtue cards, these guys here. These are always going to be active. Um, you can Your central action space, you, you can donate, you can reserve. Um... Oh, one of the two reserve spaces on your dashboard. You can actually do courage or gumption. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you can do both, actually. You can do both. Um, yeah, question mark on any slot can be paid with any die. When a die symbol uh, on an action has been paid, um, the action is said to have been paid for and will resolve. Then you'll resolve any actions that you finish. And after that, you'll choose whether to keep or discard any remaining active cards from your left or right. So if either or both of your left or right hand side cards are empty, you'll choose a new card from your hand and place it there. So you can get rid of one of these guys into the discard pile, place a new one out, and then you'll be able to draw a new card. You'll yeah. also discard any die that you have that are not in your reserve area. Trigger any end of turn effects, flip your turn order, order token over to show that your turn is over, and then a darkness will take its turn. Alright, so now it's darkness's turn apparently. <laughs> so oh. yeah, darkness, sorry. It's it's okay. every round it's virtue then darkness, virtue then darkness from what I'm gathering. Okay. Uh, draw up to two. Did you discard did you discard a card? Yeah. yeah you Place did. one? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. 
So how darkness works is you're gonna draw a card. You shuffle that darkness deck and draw one card from it. Which the deck was already shuffled, so well, we just need. Shuffling. <laughs> oh, does not trust the mic shuffle. <laughs> All right. How's it going, Kasku? We have so we'll do top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So minus one clarity. Ouch. Minus one strength. Mm. Minus one compassion. Ow. Ugh. Okay. Now we have. Uh, and there's yeah, there's two types, two parts to darkness cards. Okay. okay. So you're gonna have. Um, let me find it. First part was the book. Second is looks like. Yeah. People. Resolve the omen if there is one. Draw the card. If it's, if the current chapter is a story, resolve the story section of the card and discard it, then go to step five. Otherwise, go to step four. Um, if it's a chap, so the current chapter is a scene. This is a scene. Resolve the near section of the card and the far section. Okay, so you don't do the story. You don't do that. Oh, okay. That's the story. That's that's if it were to ask you to yeah. do one on the previous. Ah, uh, okay. Right? Okay. So you'll do near and far. Uh, and the difference between near and far is uh, far ones are ones that are not adjacent to Solomon, and mm -hmm. near ones are ones that are adjacent. Okay, so he doesn't have anything adjacent to him. So we just do the far one? Yes. Okay. It says one sentry moves three. Look at the sentries. I'm not sure which one. What? It calls out. Sentry, scout, shadows, and hunters. Uh, where is the book for... Uh, check table will find you. Where is the book for the beasts? I'll put it somewhere. Okay, it'll tell you what they are. I already mentioned it, but... Um, we know these are villagers. Uh, and that's a shadow. <laughs> Rabble, so villagers are rabble, rabble, uh, and seeker, and traveler. Okay. Is that any of that? No, there's just the shadow mentioned in here. Okay, so yeah, darkness card. Um, the near section of the card is 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 the second section. Mm -hmm. Um. Each miniature acts once uh, for each darkness card, regardless of how many lines it can enact in, however miniatures can add modifiers. Um, the near section, page 44. Let me read okay. that. Okay, the near won't happen, though, because there's nothing near. Nothing adjacent. Okay. And the far mm -hmm. is... So there's no sentry, there's no scout, no hunters. So the only thing that happens is the farthest shadow moves two to engage. This one? Huh? Does it engage with the guy there? Or just no, it'll go to Solomon. Okay. So one and two? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We need to take a torch. And throw it at the shadow. <laughs> Dissipate the Fire, shadow. Light the yeah, shadows are, are a way of uh, showing the malign presence of darkness in the board. They represent the strange sound in the dark. Uh, what you can't see, but it is there. Uh, only Solomon Cain is of interest to the shadows. They ignore anything else. They can't fight. They have an aura that threatens Solomon. When a shadow moves into the same area as Solomon, it engages him. Remove the shadow and reveal the top card of the event deck. Um, when a shadow moves into an adjacent space, it threatens him. Basically, uh, each shadow's aura reduces all tests by one and increases all t uh, reduces, sorry, uh, reduces all of Solomon Kane's tests by one and increases all tests which target Solomon Kane by one. And this is cumulative. Ouch. If he moves into the same area, you remove the shadow and draw an event card. Okay. So we want to rush this thing. Yeah. Right now we just have you on the board though. <laughs> so. But we move the, him too. Mm -hmm. cool. It is your move, Josh. Yeah. So, what did you do? Sorry. What? The little. When you feet. gather them, uh, they're going to let you place them on your board to okay. see the see the, your board in the middle area. That will give you uh, a value. They're also useful in certain For scenes okay. to, okay. to increase okay. your success of winning. Mm -hmm. Can you need it for anything? Donate them. I can do it for two things: either explore X. 
or... Oh, I got a re-roll, too. Or I could get temperance on the board. I don't know if that means anything. Yep, you can flip or re-roll one die. Yeah, that's why I gave Callie my so open yeah. heart one. Because she can use it. For each virtue player and one darkness turn for each virtue turn. I mean, I can use an open heart for gumption along with a circle, but... Which is a move one. I can also use one for contemplation, which is draw three cards from the top of the event deck and then place each card back on the top or the bottom of the deck. I'm going to flip one dice to the other side. I want to try and do this. So actually, I'm going to reserve the two hearts. Okay. And donate... That's the, the circle yeah. to me. Yeah, my question is, we have to, I'm trying to figure yeah. out how you guys are going to move the traveler. Don't you yeah. want to keep the circle? Why? Because that's. I can only save two. Part of that. I can only save two. Oh, okay. Who has move stuff? I do. What do you have? Move what? I've got a move two, which is what I I've saved two, for. I have a move one, which doesn't cost anything. It's just a one to danger, and then I've got gumption. Yeah, I would. have well, I have, I have three things game. to move right now. This one, you don't have to move one or move tor two towards the um that tracks. The, okay. Yes. So. Um. But I think it's now darkness. Can we turn, use our right? move oh. action on? Or wait, or is it still your turn, Josh? I think I'm done. I'm do we have, or dice. do we have to get Solomon Kane to the traveler first and then move them together? I don't know. Is that how we have to do it? That's a good question. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Made my dice pool. Allocated dice to what I was going to do. Place new action cards. I'll just play it over the because I'm already on the board. So. No, that's why I was just checking. Mm -hmm. So, in order to get rid of these action cards, we have to the use them, right? Well, at the end of your turn, you discard one. And then you put one a new one out. Two. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. From your you hand, have right? To discard? No, yeah. you don't. Oh, did you also no. when you drew that darkness card, did you spawn a shadow on the on the on the location? On the other location? No. Oh, the no, oh there was no okay, there was no say. spawn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We got lucky. Okay, yeah. As far as I know, I'm done. <laughs> okay. So then I'm it's a darkness it. turn. <laughs> dun dun dun. <gasps> So, I don't do the story part. Okay. Is there anything close? Nope. Nope. And far. The closest shadow moves two to engage. Oof. Which oh, puts which him puts inside. In the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And that he, the shadow will explode. <laughs> you'll draw an event card. And then you'll read the text at the top. The bottom numbers are for uh, skill checks. Okay. Darkness gathers. One virtue discards their right hand action card. So any of you can choose, as long as you have one. If you don't have one, you can't choose yourself. Mine's Explore 5. Oh, oh it's an expensive one, huh? It is. I don't think you'll need I... to explore this game. Yeah. Okay. So you can that's that's probably, probably a good one. Yeah, that's probably safe so then. So you guys want me okay. to discard this? Okay, I'll leave And that. then we will add plus one to danger. Or remove one of these, which we don't have any of these. Okay, so we have to do So it. can well can we remove it if we don't have it? That's the question. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Dang. The answer to that is the yeah. answer for the AI is if it's a thing that's gonna benefit you, that's a dumb thing that you could do, yeah. you cannot do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dang. Okay, now we're at five danger. We can only we can't get can't more get than ten. 10. Okay. Okay. That event goes there. Um, okay. And then at the end, we're going to spawn a shadow. Of course we are. On X. Okay. The spawn is for shadows, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Solomon Cain is That's surrounded. It. Alrighty. Now, since I, I did discard my right hand, do I draw another or no? Not till the end of your turn. End of my turn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Perfect. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to... Roll your dice. There for right now. Roll my dice. 
Okay, okay, that ended like that. So, oh. <laughs> cool. So I will actually use my donated dice. And I'll okay. use this. And, oh, darn. Never mind, I am going to keep both of these. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, wait. No one, one of them was donated. Oh, and our, your current spawning threshold is three for darkness. If you look on the okay. danger board there, the da the, sorry, the sea danger, oh, see yeah. that there's That's three next to it? Board. That is the max amount of shadows you can have. Oh, so as danger that, increases, okay. good to know. more yeah, shadows more are shadow possible. Pop up. Okay. okay. I'm actually going to re-roll one of them mm -hmm. to try to get across. across. Yay! Nice. Cool. Now I can... Um, move one or move two towards um, symbol. that symbol. <laughs> I forget what it's again. Exit point. So did we? Hmm. So do I move Solomon or do I yeah, move? When we move? I have been looking for that information. Okay. What does it say on there for movement? It just says move one or move two towards um. The end all, the end goal that we want to get to. Oh, it is the exit point. Okay. Yeah, the exit point, basically. I, something else. I feel like in the spirit of the game, we're supposed to be, you know, helping, helping the guy. Solomon, and that's who we're influencing. We are. But the other question, so too, is this Solomon supposed to, to be me? Like, if I'm supposed to be on the ooh, <laughs> board for that. I don't know. <laughs> the box. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Carly. Thanks for watching and sharing. <laughs> I feel like it should say somewhere. I can't find it. No. Uh, about the move action. Yeah, Ziffin, I'll probably go off of what. Yeah, Callie's saying, I think you're right. Move him towards uh, the figure and then move them together. Huh. That sounds like what would happen. What is the, and the, I mean, you have the, the, what are those extra cards that you read both of them in front of you, the discoveries? Um, so whenever the villagers in the same area, the traveler cannot move. So far, the villagers haven't been moving though, so. Um, yeah, because it hasn't. None of these have said villager. Yeah. Um, and then we can target the villagers with talk or fight. Mm -hmm. So you can fight, I can talk, but we have to get X, so we have to get these little guys up on here. That's going to be our X value for how much we mm -hmm. can talk or fight. And then I can explore, but I don't know what that means. And X it's is, only useful yeah. if there's a card, a discovery card, uh, or a location that says so. Gotcha. Getting us these icon, these little like uh, light portal, whatever things on our dashboard. What does that do? Yeah, it goes that in alters here. Your, what does it do? Now? Your X value. Is he? A, oh. is he a, he's a follower, isn't he? No, he's not. Travel. Oh, so there's Traveler. no point to me doing moving any virtues because right now it's zero. Okay. You don't need it. If we want to fight, you might want it, but more talk. Oh, so Kelly's I guess I, persuasive. Could, I can place okay. these on other people's too. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. 